Hey y'all, it's your girl Duana, and I am excited to share with you another sew along for my pattern ME2014 with Nomi patterns. Oh my gosh, I love this. I feel like I feel super cute in it. This pattern makes me feel like going to a park. I want to carry like a bag, a picnic basket or a woven purse or something with some flowers hanging out, you know, and just walking with it in my arms. And you know, that's how I feel. That's what this pattern makes me feel. I just wanna go for a walk in the park. You know, I think it's super cute. It's super me. I think it's definitely something I would wear out if I'm going out with some friends. The shorts are super cute. I feel like you can also lengthen them. I honestly plan on lengthening them because I wanna wear them, but it's still cold outside and I can't wear shorts outside right now. So while it's still cold, I think I might do a version where I just make them long pants because I really love those pockets. You know, I also, I'm not gonna lie, I also really liked my choice of shoes in this pattern. Go get your copy if you haven't gotten your copy. Without further ado, I now present you my sew along for ME2014. Here is the pattern. So let's get up close and personal. There are three views. View A is the dress with the cutouts. View B is the crop top and view C is the shorts. In this video, I will be doing the sew along for the shorts. All right, so let's take a look at the back. So make sure you are taking a look at the suggested fabrics. Um, from that list, I chose denim for this pattern, but also I want you to take note of the finished garment measurements. When choosing the right size for this pattern, the main thing to look at is the waist size. So you wanna choose the one that is closest to your waist and that would help you choose the right size. So let's take a look at the pattern pieces that you need for the shorts. This is piece nine, this is the pocket, and you're gonna cut two of these. Next is pocket piece number 10. This is the pocket facing, and you're gonna cut two of these on fabric and two of inner facing. Then you're gonna cut piece 20. This is the front of the shorts, and then you're gonna cut two of these. You're gonna cut pattern piece number 21. This is the left fly facing and you're gonna cut one of fabric and one of inner facing. All right, so pattern piece number 22 is the right fly and you're gonna cut one of these. Next is pattern piece number 23. This is the back and you're gonna cut two of these. And last but not least, this is pattern piece number 24. This is the waistband, and you're gonna cut one of these on fabric and one on interfacing. Now here are the items that you need. This is the fabric that I chose, which is denim fabric, then a seven inch non-separating zipper, some buttons, I chose to use buttons that were used for jeans, but a regular button is fine, matching thread, and a fusible interfacing. All right, so now let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start with the front of the pants. Whenever I'm doing any pattern, I like to make all my markings, especially the darts. Those are the most important. Um, and so here's where I'm going to be showing you how I mark my darts. Okay, so I'm going to always mark on the inside because that's where I'm sewing. And so I mark the end point. And then I also do little snips with my scissors just to mark the raw edge of the dart. And then um, I also make the marks where the dots are for that. So after that, I'm gonna finish making all of my markings where there are notches, where are, there are dots. Remember that the markings are one of the most important things that you can do at the very beginning. So don't skip this step. And this is not just for this piece, this is for all the pieces. Okay, so once I've made my markings, especially for the dart, I'm going to put the darts together, matching the raw edges, and then pinning it up until the point. So once I'm done making my markings, I'm gonna take my pattern pieces to the sewing machine and make the darts. All right, so when you sew your darts, you always wanna start at the raw edge, all right? And then you're gonna follow the line that you made for the dart. And as you're getting further to the point, when you get about one inch away from that point, you wanna do a slight curve into the very edge of that fabric, and then you're just gonna keep sewing all the way until you hit the point. The reason for this is to not show the dimpling at the end of your dart. And 
And here's what it looks like. And when you are done, you can tie the ends of the thread. Look at that beautiful dart. See, there is no dimpling at the ends. All right, so after you've made the darts, you wanna press the darts toward the center and stay stitched the upper edge of the front sections. I also surged around the edges so that it is clean, as you can see. And so now I'm going to put this aside and then we are going to move on to the pockets. Again, with markings, make sure that you have your markings on your pocket, but first you're gonna take a look at the pocket facing, make sure that it is interfaced and with right sides together, stitch the pocket facing to the pocket matching notches. Once you are done stitching those together, you can go ahead and trim the ends and also clip any curves. Next, you wanna understitch the pocket facing by turning the facing to the inside, pressing it, and then we're gonna do a top stitch on there and I will take it to my sewing machine so that you can see for yourself. Once you have understitched, you're going to press under about three-fourths of an inch seam allowance on the lower and side edges of the pocket using your iron. Now I'm going to baste across the top just to keep all of that in place. Now you're going to take the pockets and you're going to pin it to the front matching any small dots. I like to use a lot of pins just because I want to make sure that it doesn't move at all and it stays in place. All right, so now that I am done pinning the pockets, I'm going to stitch them onto the pants and then baste the edges. All right, so take a look at the marking that you did for the front fly. So you wanna make that marking also on the outside, but also you want to reinforce that stitch about one inch on both sides. All right, and so I'm gonna transfer that line and then I'm going to also make sure that I reinforce that front part. So with right sides together, you're going to pin the front sections matching the large dots. Then you're going to stitch the center front seam between the notch and the large dots. All right, then clip the left front to reinforce the large dot, being careful not to clip through the stitching. All right, so these should start to look like pants, which means that you are doing a fantastic job. All right, so now you're going to take your left fly facing that is interfaced and you're going to edge finish the curved edge of the left fly. I used my serger for that. All right, so now with right sides together, you're going to pin the fly to the left front edge of the pants. So once you are done pinning the fly, you're going to make sure that your dots are matching and then you're going to go ahead and stitch it together. It may be a good idea to mark the dot on the top just so you can see it when you're stitching so you don't go past the dot. You wanna make sure that you're about one fourth an inch above that dot. So this is what it should look like. I also went ahead and I pressed under about three eighths of an inch on the right front edge above the large dot because I'm gonna to need to do that later on. So you want to open out the fly facing and it's already opened out here for me. You're going to place the zipper. All right, this is our seven inch non-separating zipper. We're going to place it closed and face down over the fly facing. Zipper placement has always been tricky for me, but this is the rule that I follow. So I usually like to make sure that the zipper teeth are about a seam allowance away from the raw edge. So once I've placed it there, now I'm going to stitch close to the zipper on the left edge of the tape from the upper edge as far as the seam line on the fly. So before I stitch it together, I'm actually going to go ahead and pin it first um, just to make sure that it's not moving around when I'm stitching it together. All right, so once you've sewn the zipper onto the fly, you want to make sure not to trim away any excess at the time. Just leave it there and we will take care of that later. All right, so next I'm gonna turn the fly to the inside and I'm also gonna pin it in place. And if you haven't already, go ahead and press under 3 eighths of an inch on the right front edge above the large dot. All right, so now you're gonna open up your zipper because you're gonna pin the right front over the zipper tape close to the teeth. 
All right, so I'm going to pin it down first um, because you do want to baste it down. But before you do that, you do want to make sure that the left front will lap about one fourth of an inch over the right front. So I'm not sure you can see this, but you can see that there's just a slight overlap, which is what I need because I don't want to see my zipper. All right, so once it's basted together, you're going to take your right fly and you want to double check and make sure that your notches are there. But now you're going to fold it in half lengthwise with the wrong sides together. Also, you're going to machine base the raw edges, then press it and make sure you edge finish the raw edges. I finished my raw edges with my serger, so that's what it looks like here. All right, so you're gonna make sure your zipper is open. Take the right front edge and you're gonna check the notches, make sure it matches, and then you're gonna pin it over the finished edge of the underlap. And so once you're done pinning, you're gonna baste it together. Okay, so make sure your zipper is closed and you also wanna make sure that all the pins are out the way so that it does not get caught in the fly stitching and you're gonna do a top stitch over the fly. Now you can go ahead and trim away any excess zipper tape so it's evened with the lower edge of the fly. So now that the hard part is done, we are going to go ahead and tackle the back pieces. All right, so I already made my darts for the back sections, and I'm gonna also make sure that the darts are facing towards the center. All right, make sure you stay stitched the upper edge. I also surged my um, back pieces as well, and you're gonna stitch the front to back at the inner leg seams. You know I like to pin my pieces together because you know, I'm sure this has happened to everyone. You start to stitch it together with your machine and you realize you only picked up one fabric. So this just guarantees that I don't do that. So once you've stitched it together, um, make sure you press the edges open. And also this will be a good time to check to make sure that it fits the way that you want. So now with right sides facing, you're going to pin the remaining part of the center seam matching the inner leg seams and notches and you are going to stitch that together. Also do a second stitch on the crotch area just to reinforce that. So once you have done that, you're going to stitch the front to the back at the side seams. All right, so now you're going to take the waistband and make sure you've applied interfacing to it and you're going to press under one half inch on the long unnotched edge of the waistband. All right, so you're going to take your shorts and with right sides together, you're going to pin the shorts to the band matching the centers and placing the side seams at the small dots. Forgot to mention that you also want to make sure that you have an extension on the waistband. I had to readjust mine because I got carried away. Um, but once you've stitched that together, you will need that for the next step. Okay, so go ahead and stitch the waistband to the shorts. So now you're going to fold the band with right sides together, turn the waistband seam allowance down and open out pressed edge at the end of the band so that the raw edges are even. Once you're done pinning it, you're going to stitch the ends along the seam line, and I will show you how to do that on the sewing machine. All right, so here I am. I'm just going to stitch all the way down. You want to make sure that you back stitch at the end also, just to make sure that it's secure. And I'm going to also do this to the other side as well. So once you are done, you can go ahead and trim the ends of those. And that's just to keep it from being super bulky when you apply your buttons and your buttonholes. Turn the ends right side out. And then on the inside, you want to pin the pressed edge of the band over the seam. So once you're done pinning, you're going to go ahead and stitch in a ditch or a groove of the waistband seam, catching in the pressed edge of the band on the inside. Now it's time to apply our buttons. And because I'm not using regular buttons and these are jean buttons, I'm going to use a hammer to apply this. And of course, you don't have to use this type of button. I just decided to use this type of button for this pattern. All right, so first you're gonna make a hole where the center of the button goes. And then you're gonna pass the front of the button through the hole and then attach the back. And I placed it face down and used the hammer to secure it in place. 
Once that is done, you're gonna be making the buttonhole and you can follow your instructions on how to do that on your sewing machine. I just wanna make sure here that my buttonhole is in the right location. So last but not least, we're gonna be making the cuff. For the cuff, you can simply follow the instructions on the pattern. Um, I decided to do mine a different way. Unfortunately, the instructions for how I did it got deleted somehow, so I will try to explain it as best as possible. All right, so to achieve this look, I folded the bottom edge right sides facing by one fourth of an inch and I pressed. I then folded it again, but this time I used the fold line on the pattern as a guide for the cuff and I pressed that and then I top stitched close to the pressed edge and I stitched in the ditch um, of each leg seam and that's it. Right, so now your shorts are done. The last thing to do is just clean off any markings or just trimming any loose threads and you are done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tag me in your makes for my pattern ME2014 of Nomi Patterns.